Hey, this is Richard from A Bear Lemonade Stand. And in this video, I really wanted to quickly go through and show you guys how to properly save your images for the web. So if you're saving images for your online store, it's really important that you keep the images as small as possible. And the major reason for this is because the larger they are, it's gonna take more time to actually load on someone's browser. Uh, and this you know, can cause people to bounce off your website. This is a ranking factor for Google, so it can affect your you know, search engine optimization. So it's really important that you learn to save files properly. And for many years, I did it wrong. Uh, I was using the wrong saving function uh, within my uh, tool set which I was using Photoshop but I was using the wrong saving function and the files were like three four times bigger than what they actually should have been and so all the images uh, that I was posting in my online store the blog they're all huge and they're causing massive load times uh, it takes a big hit on your server and it could just slow everything down and bog everything down and so what you want to do is you're always trying to find how can you make the file size as small as possible while retaining you know the quality that you need uh, and so if you're you know showing off product photos you want the you want the quality to be high i mean you don't want people to start seeing fuzziness within the photos so this is kind of the challenge and i'm going to show you the way i save photos uh, now this isn't you know my kind of methodology that I came up with. Uh, some of this I learned from the internet, some of it I learned from friends. Uh, someone in particular at Shopify showed me one particular method which I've kind of adopted and I'm gonna kind of show you now. So what we have here is I have Photoshop open and I have the photo that I downloaded. So I have a bunch of photos here. I have some product photos as well uh, and a bunch of other photos, but here's uh, one image I downloaded. So I, I purchased this image and this was, I think it'll tell us here, if we go to get info, Let's see here. So this is 14.6 megabytes. This is a huge, huge file. I mean, this is bigger than like three MP3 songs, I guess, uh, kind of. So this was shot on a Canon EOS Rebel T5i, and that's a really, really high-end camera. So it's shooting a lot of detail, uh, as well as we can see the dimensions of the image here, you know, 5100 by 3400. That is a large, large photo. Uh, you know, to kind of give you some perspective, you know, uh, you know the, the screen, most computer screens are, you know, maybe 2,000 or something pixels across. So, you know, this is way bigger than the entire screen. Um, it's a couple times bigger than the entire screen. And so obviously we don't need it that big. So the first thing we need to do is we need to reduce the size of this image, uh, the dimensions of this image to something that's a little bit more manageable and that makes sense. So let me close this. I'm going to open up this file now in Photoshop. And it even took a second for Photoshop to open it because it's so big. So this is the file. Uh, we can see the size that we're looking at it right now. I mean, I'm on like a, I think this is like maybe a 23, 27 inch monitor. And we're only at 16.7% uh, uh, of the final size, right? So that gives you an idea how big this is. So this in total here, if we were to zoom in, that's, that's the original size. So this is a huge photo, right? So first thing we got to do is we got to shrink this. That's way too big. So couple ways we can do this. We can, we can reduce the size of the dimensions when we're saving the file, uh, or we can do it prior to. So let's do it prior to just so we can kind of separate the different stages here. So what we're going to want to do is I'm using Photoshop. I mean, depending on the program that you actually end up using, it's going to be all relatively similar. I mean, the process is the same. It's just, you know, the menus or whatever that you go to, it's going to be maybe slightly different. So uh, here we're going to go up to image. We're going to go to image size. And here we can see again, right? It's 5,100 by 3,400 pixels. So we need to reduce this. First thing we also want to do is we want to make sure um, that it's reducing it in proportion, right? So you'd want to just reduce the length or the width or the height, whatever. You want to you know, reduce it in proportion so it doesn't get all skewed and mashed up. So uh, this is length right now. That's what that little link means. So let's reduce this to something more manageable. Now, you know, this is a nice, beautiful background image. Let's assume we're using this for, you know, a big hero image on the home page. Uh, so, you know, you want it to be big, you want it to be crisp. It's gonna be kind of the first image and the first impression people see of your store. Uh, so we wanna keep it, you know, we wanna keep it large and crisp, but we still need to reduce it. So, you know, if, if we look on uh, the theme developers website for the particular theme we're using, you know, a lot of times they'll tell us what are the ideal dimensions uh, for the image. But, you know, right now, just for the purpose of this example, let's just take a guess, right? So we know it's probably gonna be, for a big hero image, they're usually somewhere around, you know, on the smaller scale might be 1200, larger scale it goes up to 16, maybe 1800. So, 
you know, let's even just, let's keep it big. Let's go up to 1800. Uh, so 1800, that brings it down to 1800 by 1200. Cause again, it's doing it in proportion, right? Select okay. So now it's, uh, it's changed the dimensions. It's shrunk the image, right? So let's see here. Now we're at 50%. So that's even big, 67, 100%. So, you know, the, the photo is still on the large side, um, but we still shrank it considerably. So now we have the image shrunk. That right there is going to reduce the actual file size significantly, um, but we can do more. So in Photoshop, uh, Photoshop has this uh, command. Uh, it's called save for web. Now they've started changing the software and they've made their regular save better. It used to be that if you just went here and you went to save, this would still create a rather large file size for you. And this is what I was doing for a long time. Uh, and so they, this was the way to actually save it. Going to save for web was the actual way to save it um, for online use. Um, and that would kind of conserve a lot of the, you know, extra sizing in the file. And so they've changed that and now they've made this a lot better. Um, by habit, I still use the save for web command and that's why they keep it is because people still um, by habit use this. So you want to make sure that you are whatever software you're using, whatever app you're using, uh, you want to make sure that you are just using a command where you know it's meant for saving for the web. If you have any sort of options, uh, saving for print, saving for web, make sure you always save for web. Uh, it's really important. So we're going to go to save for web. So that's gonna bring up this dialogue here. Uh, and it looks a little bit intimidating, you know, for the most part, there's only a couple of settings you really need to adjust for this. So first things first, we need to select whether or not we wanna save this as a JPEG uh, or a PNG, a GIF uh, or WPMP, which to be honest with you, I've never even heard of. So ultimately, this is a big, large, beautiful photograph. There's lots of colors in here. I mean, probably within this photograph, there are probably thousands, maybe even millions of colors with all the different shades. So JPEG is the best file type for any sort of photographs or any sort of complex image uh, with a lot of shadows, with a lot of different tones in it. JPEG produces relatively small file sizes, um, but still allows you to display millions of colors. Uh, and so that's important for photographs. So if it's any sort of photograph, you're gonna to wanna to save it as JPEG. Traditionally online, JPEG is gonna be kind of the standard that you go with. Now, the only reason you would go with something like a PNG, usually, you know, JPEG is kind of dominant, um, but PNGs are also pretty popular online. And PNGs, are usually used for stuff like logos. Uh, and what that will do is it'll just, instead of you having a big white border, you know, a big white background behind your logo or anything like that, uh, it, it allows for transparency. JPEGs don't. So PNGs allow for transparency, which allow you to show your logo. You can put your logo, for example, on this photograph. And it's not like you'll have, you know, a big white box with your logo in it. It'll just be your logo with the photograph coming through behind. So you usually use PNGs if you need any sort of transparency. Uh, and that's, like I said, usually reserved for logos and, you know, a couple of other things. So again, though, we're doing a photograph, millions of colors, we really have to use a JPEG and it's a really good option ultimately. So we've selected JPEG. Now we can select here the quality in which we want to save it at. So it kind of has a scale here, low, medium, high, very high, maximum. Uh, now you can play around with this and you can watch for the results actually here. You can zoom in a little bit more if you want to really kind of get into the results to see what it's doing. So let's just look at some color here, some of the leaves. Uh, and you can see if we go down to low, uh, I don't know if you can see on the recording here, but if we go down to low, you can see things get a little bit fuzzier. Uh, you can see the edges around, you know, where there's high contrast around these tomatoes. Uh, it gets really fuzzy and gets a little bit grainy. So low is not good. I probably wouldn't go with low for a really important image like this. Uh, and you can see, let me just switch back to maximum and you can see how much more it sharpened up there. So traditionally I'd say that high is usually a pretty safe bet for most images uh, and for most people's needs. Uh, and that's usually kind of my default go-to. So I'll click on high uh, and that will automatically adjust the quality over here. You can kind of fine tune it if you want. Really, there's no need though. Uh, you just basically need to select from this sort of drop down here. So high is usually a pretty safe bet. Um, I usually go with that. And if we look down here, this is gonna tell us how big the file size is gonna be. So it's telling us a JPEG, and if we save it at high, it's going to go down to 560K. So we've now, 
you know, this was 14 megabytes before we reduced the dimensions. And let's just actually go back to max. If we go back to maximum, so just reducing the dimensions of the image, the overall size of the image, it went from 14 megabytes uh, down to two megabytes, 2.3 megabytes. So we've already done tremendous amount of work. But again, right, that's on maximum. We can get it even smaller. So online, you're gonna want, for most images, you're gonna wanna keep them, like an image like this, I wouldn't wanna see it go really any higher than maybe five or 600K. Uh, that starts to get you know, pretty heavy. Uh, if people have slower connections, it's gonna take long for it to load potentially. Uh, and so we wanna kinda try and get it down to maybe five, 600K I'd say. So let's go to high and see what high does. So high is pretty good, right? We're bringing it down now to 560K. Um, and that's kind of where we want to be. If we can get it even lower, that would be good. But at that point, we're probably going to be sacrificing some of the quality here. Uh, and because this, I would consider this to be an important image, if it's going on the homepage, it's going to be the first thing that people see. Uh, I think I'm pretty happy here. So we can also see down here, this is the option where you had to reduce the, the dimensions of the image while you're saving it. Now we've already done that, but you can see down here, if we were to adjust it again, let's, uh, instead of the width being 1800, let's go to 1200 and let's see how that changes the file size. Let me reselect high up here. Oh, there we go, it just took a second. So, okay, so that brought it down now to 264K. So. You know, we went from 1800 width to 1200 width, uh, and we basically have uh, less, more than halved actually the the actual file size. So now we're at 264. If we went down to 1200, um, you know, like I said, let's just for the sake of argument, you know, stick with the 1800. Uh, again, though, you're going to want to look at your theme uh, and see what the actual developer and the designer suggests for your particular theme. That's going to be the best way to do this. Uh, so those are really the only settings you really need to pay attention to. The others are kind of fine tuning. Uh, they get into a lot of detail and unless you really know how to use them, uh, you probably want to just stay away from them at this point. So we're going to click save uh, and then we'll save it to our desktop. And we'll replace the image. Okay, so let's take a look at the image now when we open it up. Okay, so now we're down to 576K, right? So we went from over 14 megabytes to 576K. Uh, so we're doing pretty good now. Um, now there's one other program I really like to use. It's just sort of like how I finish all my photos off. So it's this program called Image Optin. Uh, and what it is, is it's a very small little application. Uh, I usually keep it in my toolbar. I've just moved it to my desktop for this particular example. Uh, but all you have to do is once all your photos, once you save them, all you have to do is just drag the photo on top of image opt-in and it's going to open it up and it's going to do some additional work to try and reduce the size even further. Uh, and now this program uh, uses something called lossless compression. So it's going to compress the file a little bit, but you're not going to lose any quality. It's just getting rid of some extra metadata that's attached to it. So this is stuff that you can't even see. It's just information attached to the file and it kind of gets rid of that and it just reduces it. So in this particular case, we used Photoshop first to save the file and Photoshop does a really good job at optimizing these photos if you use Photoshop. Uh, and so when we used image often now, it only saved about 2.9%. So not much in the scheme of things. However, every little bit counts. And what it's done now is it's just resaved the file on top of itself. So, you know, there is no save dialogue or, you know, trying to find a new spot to save it or anything like that. Just drag and drop and it just reduces the size a little bit more. So depending on what program you use, uh, like I said, we used Photoshop here and Photoshop's really good at optimizing. Um, but here's an example of some other photos. So let me just, if I grab these photos here, so this was, this was for a blog post. Somebody else sent me these photos. Uh, you know, I don't know how they saved them. I don't know if they used Photoshop or not. So, you know, what I would do is I would just drag all these on top of image optim and let's see what it does here. Just working on a couple more files. There we go. So, here we can see for these particular files, we saved a lot of space actually. So, you know, 19, 34, 32, 32, 23, 79%, 46%, 43, 52, right? So 
you can see, you know, the first photo, we already kind of optimized it through Photoshop, only saved 3%, not a big deal probably. Um, but that's why I wanted to show you other photos, depending on, you know, where you get the photos from, how they save them, uh, or what program you even use to save them. You could actually get massive savings by using this tiny little app called Image Optin. So it's now resaved all these down here. I'll tell you, look, it saved 1.2 megabytes of 5.6 megabytes, and it's about 30% per file that it saved. So this did a really good job on these files. So that's that's exactly what I would do. That's my process. These files now are ready to upload. Uh, they're optimized for the web now. They're kind of you know the smallest file size they can be while retaining you know excellent quality for your particular purpose. Uh, and you're really good to go now. So. Uh, that's the process I use. I'd recommend it to you. Again, if you're using Photoshop, you're already doing a good job if you're using that save as command. Um, you know, if you're not using Photoshop, I know a lot of people don't feel comfortable with Photoshop. It can be pretty confusing off the top. Uh, so at the very least, you want to make sure that you at least download image off them. Uh, and there's a couple of others that were mentioned in the blog post that you can check out as well. But this is just such a small, easy and free app uh, that every single photo that you ever post uh, to your website, to your blog, to your online store, you should at least run it through image opt-in first. Uh, it's going to save you a lot of space. Uh, it's going to make your pages just load a lot quicker.